Can you just provide basically from your perspective a highlight reel over the past two years? What were some of the, the things that went really well um, that you know, Osmosis really established? And maybe also in the, you know, considering the bear market, what are some of the things that were challenging over the past two years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, uh, Osmosis is this DEX app chain uh, for the Cosmos ecosystem. And we kind of, over the past two years, it's evolved a lot of uh, ups and downs, obviously. Uh, you know, we kind of were one of the first in production IBC uh, products that kind of made a lot, a lot of the causes ecosystem assets were had no way of getting liquidity and stuff. And so we were kind of one of the first places to offer that. All of the crypto markets are down, but yes, Cosmos definitely got hit, I think, harder than uh, a lot of places uh, because of our like relative closeness to Terra. Obviously, the Osmo token took quite a hit because of that as well. And by being the like base pair of the deck, like as a lot of other Cosmos assets kind of went down, it kind of got hit pretty hard as well. Big thing we have to focus on is like, you know, increasing our speed of execution in Cosmos and like making it so that like, hey, it's not just what we, this is where we have the best ideas. This is where, you know, we have the best ideas and we execute them better than uh, anyone else. So I think from... Our team's perspective, I think that's been really a big focus of ours right now. It's like, okay, how do we uh, make sure we're shipping and executing things? Uh, yeah, faster, honestly, better. across all ecosystems, it's just prices going down, like down bad, you know, 90, 95, 98%. And I think for me, it's sometimes really hard as a content creator, obviously, um, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> talking about, you know, how excited I am for all these things, DYDX and Celestia and Mesh Security and Osmosis and Supercharged Pools, and then price just goes down. So it's like, you know, yeah. people are people are impatient. They want to see mm -hmm. price go up. I, I think like for me, like what I'm, what I look the most for is like, what are the exciting new applications? I feel like what happens in the bear market is everyone becomes just so focused on just like infrastructure development. Uh, and like, you know, the amount of people building like DA layers and shared sequencers and all this stuff. It's like, what is all, what are we going to use all this for? Right. And I feel like um, the applications that I'm most like, you know, I think friend tech was like really exciting. Mostly like, even if you think it's silly, it was like, Oh, here's this like new application that people are like using. And it's like something you can't, you don't do in, it's not just like a copying of something in web two and porting it. Right. It's like, Oh, here's this like new application. As you talk about applications, uh, I think on osmosis, but also across cosmos, I think there's some exciting stuff uh, coming up. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, Levana protocol is one of them that launched on osmosis, I think just around a month ago or something. And I just opened their site mm -hmm. there. They did, they just crossed 2000 users, uh, cumulative volume approaching the hundred million dollars. Um, is Levana mm -hmm. currently the star application on osmosis or what other things are, are, uh, hot right now? Yeah, no, I definitely think Levana is, uh, you know, the, the the star application right now just because you know like i said perps are what people want trading on margin and leverage is what people want and so uh levana was sort of the first time in cosmos that you're able to do that very easily right and so you can come in take take on a 10x 20x leverage position on atom and you know and, and or or short atom if you want to right and i think people are having a lot of fun uh doing that i think we're gonna see like a huge exposure explosion of herbs protocols in, in in cosmos and i think that's where you're going to see a lot of the uh activity coming from and you know i, I want we want to position osmosis to be a place where a lot of that uh activity happens on top of you mentioned uh, ust the collapse earlier and, and terra and the stablecoin experiment now we're mm -hmm. the place where we're we have native usdt live on kava we have native mm -hmm. usdc live on noble we have mm -hmm. um i think this was announced at osmocon um the uh, repped uh, btc from from bitgo um and a couple mm -hmm. more assets like how do you view this impacting osmosis as a chain or dex or 
DeFi platform and the broader Cosmos uh, ecosystem? Yeah, so I think a couple of things, right? One, I think we just want to make it so people are more comfortable with host with holding assets on uh, Osmosis directly, right? Like when you're holding USDC today, bridge from Ethereum, just over the course of the last few years, people have rightfully so have gotten more and more scared of like bridge risk. Um, and so being able to say that like, hey, you know, we're going to, here's this like native assets that's back issued by note by circle directly on Osmosis or, or in Cosmos rather than this like taking on the bridge risk of Axelar or something like that. Uh, you know, I think more people will be willing to do that basically. Uh, you know, we're, we work with BitGo to issue native WBTC on uh, Osmosis directly. And because, you know, I one of the, like at that same Terra uh, talk, I also talked about like, you know, I do think the way for the way forward for Cosmos is to become way more aligned with Bitcoin uh, and like, you know, become the app layer for Bitcoin. And I think that's part of that. We need to be building like decentral, proper decentralized Bitcoin bridges. So, uh, you know, the Nomic team is building one. I think Axlar was bu building one. I think, you know, Thorchain actually has probably the best in production Bitcoin bridge that's been running for years and working. Um, and so, you know, figuring out, so getting like Bitcoin bridges being run, like more natively in the Cosmos ecosystem, um, maybe as an ICS chain or something like that. But then like have it, but, and so that, that'll take some time. And so I think like native WBTC was there at, we, we brought, we like work with Bitcoin, bring that as a stop gap of like, hey, let's start getting Bitcoin uh, usage in uh, in Cosmos DeFi, like, you know, whether you need it as collateral on like different systems, maybe build a stable coin that's backed by Bitcoin, uh, build all these sorts of things, and then eventually swap it out for actually decentralized Bitcoin uh, bridges uh, over time. Um, the other thing that I, we're really excited about is this thing that we built called Allo Alloyed Assets, which is basically like this bridge fungifier. Uh, we, we, you know, we talked about back when the original Osmosis bridge war was happening, we talked about like, Hey, the end goal is we want to have many bridges, but still not fragment liquidity and UX across them. Osmosis governance basically approved wormhole now as the second canonical bridge, uh, for, uh, Osmosis. So now, you know, through wormhole, we have access to some assets that we didn't have by Axelar. So like Sol and Aptos and Sui. Um, and then, but what about ETH, right? Like, what if we, like, now we have two versions of ETH on Osmosis, right? We have the one from Axelar and we have the one from Wormhole. So what we're doing is we're building this thing called Alloyed Assets, which is basically, you could think of it like a stable swap where it has, has both of the assets in it. And they, but it, you can swap either for the other, but with no slippage and no fees. but with rate limits. Um, and so what that will mean is that in this stable swap, you can't, you know, the amount of wormhole ETH in this thing can't increase by more than 10% in a 24 hour period. Why we call it alloyed assets is we're gonna, we wanna make it so that the LP share of this stable swap is the canonical ETH on osmosis. So we, we want to urge people to hold the alloyed asset. So you so now you can think of it. There's almost three types of ETH on uh, Osmosis. There'll be Axlar ETH, Wormhole ETH, and the alloyed ETH, which is this like blend of these two. It sounds like with this strategy, you're also trying to maybe branch out from Cosmos, or what are the goals mm -hmm. there? Yeah, I mean, the goal for us right now is how do we build the ux for the best like decentralized exchange right like uh i think that's definitely one of the big shifts that we're trying to do in osmosis is like not just be the cosmos decks anymore right we just want to be the best decks and like how do we go onboard users from they shouldn't have to know that they're using cosmos or that they're using mm. you know they shouldn't have to know about the stack that they're using necessarily, right? We want to be, and that, that includes a lot of things. So like the alloyed assets, this is about making it the, the, 
deposit withdraw experience from every chain super easy talking about osmocon you you just said already been the, the second uh, this year um what were some of the highlights you mentioned the wormhole uh, announcement uh, bitgo i think was there as well um what are some of the the other highlights and announcements for a long time anchorage had supported osmosis but now we have bitgo and fireblocks as well so these three together sort of make up the you know vast swath of like the custody market so you know, having all three of them basically support it um you know we are very uh you know one of the other things that we're kind of spending a lot of time on right now beyond as i mentioned the smart account stuff um it's also on the privacy so you know people probably might remember that osmosis really started off with this like goal of like privacy uh and you know dev as part of his osmocon talk gave this like uh walkthrough of how we how we can add privacy into cosmwasm make it very easy for like a cosmwasm contract developer to like with one or two extra lines of code uh add like privacy primitives to their thing What's the latest stage of mesh security and its development yeah so the confio team has been uh chugging away at it and so i think so at OsmoCon, they gave actually a demo of showing like two test nets uh, doing sort of mesh security uh, with each other. Um, now, so I think that we're probably going to see some stuff like live on mainnets by by the end of the year. Um, nice. And and then on top of that, what we're also really excited about is like working with uh, like some uh, other projects to actually bit build in plugins for like eigenlayer into mesh security as well so it's like okay we'll have the mesh security happening with cosmos within the cosmos ecosystem but also from like other places like uh eigenlayer or babylon with the bitcoin restaking so you know the, the, have the mesh be bigger than just cosmos and i think that's really the end, end goal here so you're still an undercover undercover bitcoin maxi i i mean like i said i think bitcoin is how we save cosmos um we like you know, Cosmos. We need a to grow a DeFi economy. We need a base money that can provide the like collateral for the system. And you know, Atom is good, but it's you know at the end of the day, it it's, it has a hundredth of the market cap of of something like ETH. And it's like if you want to build something that can compete with the scale that Ethereum has right now, Bitcoin is the answer. Right? There's half a trillion dollars of collateral just sitting there. And if you could figure out how to activate even 1% of it, that's how you bootstrap a DeFi economy.